the Force will be with you, always, on the Nerdthusiast Podcast. I am your co-host, Richard Eiley, here with my co-host, Matthew Morosi. I find that answer vague and unconvincing. That was pretty good. I like that one. That's pretty good. That's a good lead into what we're talking about today, Matt, which is Rogue One and Solo. Dude, B-Sides today. That's what we're doing. We're back on Star Wars. Welcome in, everybody. How's it going? Matt, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm, I want to say I'm doing good, but I had a bunch of disgusting McDonald's and donuts today, and I feel a little I eat like poisoned. trash, too. Yeah, but you're in worse shape, I think. Yeah, I think so. I put a lot of... Just, you put some extra effort into the trash Yeah, I put today. McGriddles in my mouth. I put... Donuts? Know, yeah, a lot of donuts. Those chips. I just had some chicken nugs and some <sighs> half of a double cheeseburger. It's going to be rough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but besides today, we are going over Star Wars. We're continuing our... Watching of the movies, our uh, multi-marathon series of the Star Wars. Presented uh, by McDonald's. Presented by McDonald's. McDonald's is a sponsor <laughs> of the podcast. That is official. Uh, it's a big announcement that we have. I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, get all your great breakfast needs from McDonald's. Get them nugs. They will take care of you. They will destroy your insides. Uh, I felt more tired after eating McDonald's because I felt like my stomach was doing a lot of work to digest all the insoluble fibers and... Well, it's okay. We had a two-hour and 13-minute movie movie to watch. Yeah, that helped. That helped me kind of get back to normal. But, uh, yeah, so here we are. We watched Rogue One and Solo, not in that order, in reverse order. And, Matt, before we can do any of that, though... You have We have a game to play. We do have a game to play. Yeah, this is kind of like our new game that we play. Oh, we're also be going over the uh, new Star Wars trailer. Oh, yeah, and yeah, for anyone listening, uh, new the final trailer of The Rise of Skywalker, Episode 9 of Star Wars, hit yesterday. Uh, we watched that, and we're going to go over that, too. That That's probably going to ha- you know be at the front of the podcast before uh, Rogue One and Solo Discussion. Yep, but first, we yes. have a Star Wars inclination proclamation the inclination proclamation the star wars edition is uh, happening right now matt this game you uh you answer you ask me some questions i answer them then we find out what your answers were too right we compare at the end mm-hmm. and these questions have no context you can take whatever you will with them okay so they're, they're just, not they're just rogue, questions they're not rogue one and... oh they're rogue one and solar related but okay. there's i'm not asking you <laughs> which is better, which is worse. There's no context to the question. Oh, you're it's just simply a question, me... just like before. Okay, I love it. There that. was no context to those questions. That's true. So you true. can interpret this however you want. I didn't know so that. So if we pick something, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. They can mean whatever you want it to mean. It means a lot. It's going to mean a lot to it, me. It, it might mean a lot to you. I apply much context to whatever I answer. So Well, then let's get into this. Let's do it. I may mispronounce some of these words because I don't understand <laughs> the English language. And Star Wars words Plus are Plus they're Star Wars words. Yeah, they're yeah. difficult. First question. Mm-hmm. Kiyuzo Pitar. God damn it, man. What the fuck? All right. Or, mm-hmm. do you know what that is? <laughs> Go ahead. What's the next one? <laughs> it was the weapon used by Dryden Voss. Okay. The okay. Double-sided okay. Daggers. The little daggers that had the, like a little the lightsaber semi lightsaber or something. Whatever. That thing okay. Was. Okay. Thank That's you. That's what that is. Okay. What are those called? Kiyuzo Pitar. Kiyuzo Pitar. I'm guessing. Or. Or you get your, your other choice uh-huh. is the end MWC dash three five C, also known as the staccato lightning, repeating cannon, which was used by Bayes in Rogue One. Uh, Bayes being the character who is uh, Donnie Yen's character's friend. The yes, big he guy. has like the shotgun backpack thingy. Yeah, uh, this that is that weapon or the other weapon? Uh, it's definitely the 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 freaking Dryden Voss's daggers, double daggers. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> the Kyuzo Pitar. Kyuzo, Kyuzo Pitar. And if I'm wrong, I, I got this all from like some Star Wars fan site, so you can go blame them. Okay. I don't know what that thing was I actually called. It look it up. It was a Wikipedia. Number two. Yeah. Coaxium or Kyber Crystal. This is a good one. Yeah, because both of these. Okay, I like this one. Uh, Coaxium. No, mm, Kyber Crystals. What? I, that was stupid. I almost made a stupid decision. Maybe I made a stupid decision. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll see. We'll see. Now we're getting into some real shit. Mm -hmm. Tobias Beckett. Okay. Or Cassian Andor. This is a good question. It is a good question. I thought a lot about the characters. I didn't just throw them together like I I, almost did. I appreciate (laughs) it. Did you do that last time? No, no, I didn't. No, no. I I gave it some thought. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Tobias Beckett. Both lovely characters, though. Next question, question number four. Mm. 
pardon me again if I mispronounce these. Okay. Chirit Imwi. Yep. Or Lando. <laughs> Lando covers in. If Question picked, number five. If you pick Chirrut for that. By the way, we're going to go over Matt's answers. Too, yeah, we'll go over mine at the end. Yeah. We'll compare. Number five. Yeah. Out of your questions, number three and number four answers, <laughs> who do you choose? So your choices are Beckett or Lando. Whoa. Beckett or Lando Calrissian. Mm-hmm. Lando Calrissian is kind of made a fool of time and time again. Um, so Beckett, Tobias Beckett. <laughs> this is what I really like. It's so stupid, though. CG Tarkin or CG Leia? <laughs> uh, and there's no context. Yeah, to these. these are. <laughs> this could mean anything. It doesn't have to relate to the movies. It could be CG whatever. <laughs> Which CG Tarkin? It could be from the fucking animated series. Who knows? Uh, I, dude, I hate them <laughs> both. CG Leia? No, CG Tarkin. I guess. Is that your final answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> the Thai Striker or the Imperial Hauler? Okay, so you're going to have to explain what these ships are to me. The Thai Striker is like, it looks uh, like a Thai fighter, but it has like a long like thing sticking out it's of like it. It's like a triangle? Google it real quick. <laughs> Thai Striker? There's a Thai Striker. That's from Rogue One. Okay. And the Imperial Hauler is from Solo. Uh, it's always fun to, to okay tie striker yeah it's got like a triangular like fronts on it i do remember this one and what's the other one called imperial hauler imperial That's hauler these were new ships i guess from both films okay all right the hauler being the the hauler the imperial hauler is the ship used in solo to uh for the train heist when they're trying mm. to steal yeah rio and beckett and everybody you're using they're that. trying to get that one tr- uh, train off the track yeah the one it. with the coaxium yeah. in it yep, yep, and yep. then the tie striker is just you know a cool looking uh new type of tie fighter yep pretty cool uh imperial hauler l337 mm. or k2so uh, k2so kessel run we're storming the beach. No, you have to. You can't call it storming the beach. What do you call it then? The the battle of Scarif. Really? Yeah, Matt. Is that what you'd call it? Storming the beach. Yeah, I this like isn't... the word. <laughs> Kessel Run, storming beach. Sure, we'll put battle of Scarif. Just battle for you fucking of Scarif. Nerds. Yeah, thank you. As Even a nerd, the fuck I... knows I'm gonna spell it right. <laughs> Our fucking thing is called nerd enthusiast, and you're cursing nerds. <laughs> <laughs> um. Man, those are both really good. These are good questions, man. These are tough. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the Kessel Run, which is crazy because I hated the idea of it before Solo came out. <coughs> Question number ten. Excuse me. Yes. Bless you. Thanks. Hope or luck. Another one of these fucking ridiculous <laughs> luck, baby. Luck all the way. None of this hope bullshit. I was over it. They said hope too many times in that movie. We'll get into it. All right, so let's run through these really quick. Is that all of them? Is that all That's 10? That's all 10 all right, questions. All right, you did it. I'm proud of you. <laughs> so. I'm proud of us. Just a quick recap. Number one, you said Kayuzu Pitar for the weapons. Which... I said MWC-35C because I can't resist a good old shoddy. Yeah. I, I, I anticipated this. Quaxium. Wait, hold Ka- on. Let's go back to that. What's wrong with uh, driving Nothing. bosses? I thought it was really cool. You thought they were cool? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. In fact, I think the shotgun's kind of stupid, but I just can't resist a good shotgun. Okay. I understand. I didn't even know it was a shotgun. I thought it was a Gatling. I mean, he pulls a little thingy or anything. He does that, yeah, oh. at the end of the movie. He's like pulling it to like do the one shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, little... whatever. It seemed unnecessary because that was the first time he used it the whole movie. But, yeah. He never but used sure. it like a shotgun, and there was a lot of people coming at him. You would think. Yeah. Machine that, gun. That little pump action? Wasted time. Might have killed him. Made me pick it though, really. Even though it was a waste of time. Shotgun, hopes. I like shotguns. Okay. Coaxium or kyber crystals? Uh, Richard says kyber crystals. I say kyber crystals. So yeah, that's I mean the same. Coaxium is a cooler plot thread, I think, in a uh, solo than kyber crystals. Oh being yeah, the focus, definitely. So. But it's kyber crystals. But kyber crystals are fucking kyber crystals. So. Exactly. Yeah, hard to make lightsabers. If it was in the context of these movies, I would do coaxium. But. It could be whatever context you want. There's no context to these. That's questions. true. That's true. But I, uh, you know, <laughs> I applied the 
the general context. Now shit gets real. Okay. Tobias Beckett, Cassian Andor. I feel like I know what you picked here. What do you think I picked? Cassian Andor. I picked Tobias Beckett. Did you really? I did. I think he was a better character. Wow. I like Cassian. Uh, I love Cassian. But, uh, that was a hard question. Tobias, like his back and forthness, his unpredictableness. Mm-hmm. I like that. I, it was very cool. Yep. Yeah. And uh, what's his name? Is an awesome actor. I don't remember uh, names. Or anything, Woody Harrelson. Woody yeah. Harrelson. Fantastic. Yeah. It was fantastic to see him play basically himself within the Star Wars universe. Really fun. Chirrut Imwil or Lando? You chose Lando. Mm-hmm. I choose Chirrut. Might be saying his name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you then, chose Chirrut? I did. Over like this. What has Lando one? done for anyone he, other than uh, himself? He helped out in the end. Mm. Yeah. He, uh, he 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 sa- helped save Han Solo. Uh, that guy who played his character is awesome. Uh, Billy D. Williams uh, is great. Uh, yeah, and the young one. Too. Oh, Donald Glover is Donald also Glover, great. Yeah. yeah, both of them are great. Yeah. But yeah. come on, man, blind dude that uh, has some damn Listen, skills. Listen, I love Donnie Yen. I love Ip Man. I love, uh, but I don't know if I love Chirrut. I love Chirrut. All right. And then it was uh, whatever your qu- your answer was from the previous one. You went with Tobias Beckett. Over Lando Calrissian. Over Lando. Oh, no, wait. That was... Where am I? Did you do it? I think so. Yeah, those are my two. Yeah, you did. You I, did. I, I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, Richard I did. Richard Beckett. Yep, you yes. chose Beckett. And okay. I choose Chirrut. Well, Chirrut all the way, huh? Yep. Over Beckett. Yep. I was so... I Come was at so, me, nerds. Come at me. I was so happy. I was like, wow, he really liked Solo. He really liked Tobias Beckett. This means so much. And then you pick Chirrut over Beckett, a character who has no character development. Doesn't need to. All right. We'll get into it. Badass is a badass. <laughs> I'm upset. Chirrut would whoop his ass. Uh, I don't know about that. Mm. I don't know. CG Tarkin or CG Leia? <laughs> Tarkin. Like, Leia just looked worse for some reason than Tarkin did. And Tarkin... Neither of them looked good. Just Tarkin so was the actual character within the movie, whereas yeah. Leia was... Why is she here at the very end? They made no her reason? head too big for her body. It was bizarre. Yeah, it was a weird... It was bad. Stop yeah. doing it. Stop CGIing faces. Tie Striker or Imperial Hauler? You went Hauler. I went Tie Striker. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about like my ultimate choice on that one. I mean, they're both fine. Who cares? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Neither of them really appeal. None of this matters. How come you didn't pick the Rogue One as one of the ships? I don't know. <laughs> 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 All right. L337 or K2SO? We both want K2SO. Yeah. I liked L3, but L3's, K2SO, come on now. L3's hilarious, but K2SO is just... Uh, that sacrifice he makes at the end is very good. Kessel Run or Battle of Scarif? I went Scarif, you went Kessel Run. No surprises saw there. That, I saw think. that going down, yeah. And then Hope or Luck. Richard goes Luck, Matt goes Hope. Matt, here's the thing about Hope in Rogue One. They say Hope a lot. They mm-hmm. say Rebellions are built on Hope mm-hmm. twice. They It's a thing that come, is a callback pretty often. And it's very irritating to me that like because the movie that comes out right after it chronologically is called A New Hope. It wasn't originally called A New Hope. But it's no, but Star Wars. doesn't it say episode four, a new hope in the, they added in the, that later. Oh, in the crawl. They added yeah, that in the crawl. I, too? I think so. A new hope wasn't meant to be for that name. It was just star Wars. Whatever the case, clearly like they focus on that idea of a new hope sure. in this movie. And like, it's throughout star Wars though. It's more know. impactful. I don't know. It just sounds like luck a- only matters to and around Han Solo. No, it, 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 there's luck <laughs> elsewhere. I mean, Other bit. people are a little bit lucky. Luke's got some luck on his side. All right, man, we got, uh, uh, Inclination proclamation, we did it. We did it. How do you feel about it? It's fine. I think I think we did a good job. <laughs> all right, going forward, Matt, we got to talk about the Rise of uh, Skywalker yeah, trailer. Yeah, let's jump into this trailer, dude. All right, so give me your uh, initial thoughts. We just uh, came you know out what yesterday. My thoughts. Why not? What were your initial thoughts? You saw this trailer. What did you feel? Not much. What? This didn't like impact you in any way. No. I think everyone, everybody's so fucking hyped right now. Mm-hmm. Y'all forget about episode eight. I know it's uh, JJ's back. I get it. Yeah. JJ but is back. How are you going to fix that trash pile that exists? How are you going to fix that flaming garbage pile? Listen, in terms of things that need to be fixed in episode nine, there's the only thing that really you need to, to address or that has been irrep- irreparably damaged is Luke's character assassination in episode eight like that's the the biggest issue everything else that happens in episode eight to me utterly inconsequential 
Like it, nothing. the 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 timeline is like over a day after episode seven. Like nothing really happens. So I think, I think we we can get past this idea that like maybe you know, there, episode eight is an unfixable mess. I think there's a possibility we can get this going in the right direction. Uh, I'm gonna say the trailer looked good. Yeah, there there were good things that happened. I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not denying that. I'm just not getting hyped anymore. I, that's they smart. Need, they need, fuck you. That's safe. Show me the goods. That's a safe bet. You should. I, I don't. You blame built you for me that. up with Rogue One. You know, you gave me a little bit of hope there with seven, mm. and then you shat all over me with eight. That's not letting it happen again. I'm on my guard, bitches. Okay, that's fair, and you should be, and I should be, but I, I don't know. I watch this trailer, and the music uh, that rep- the Star Wars reprise that they uh, they remixed for it or yeah. redid by John Williams, amazing. S- like the power behind it was like a lot. <laughs> I know they showed it in another trailer, and I think they showed it in this one too—the Death Star and, and uh, the moons of uh, Endor. Yeah, we like, uh, that's speculated. Rad. Speculated to be on the moons of Endor. That was really cool. I love Endor too, mm. and I hope we get some Ewoks. In this I, movie. If we get Ewoks, I'm gonna be a little bit bummed. If there's a small amount of Ewoks, if we see like an Ewok or two, you know, there's gonna be at least a couple. If they go to Endor, there's yeah. gonna be at least an Ewok in the movie. Maybe they help them get their boat to get to the Death Star because they're on a little boat as they're going. They are good with time. logs. That was a that was a metal boat. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, let's see. So uh, here's something that like the trailer seems to be hinting at, and I'm really excited about. Um, it kind of looks like maybe Ray and Kylo are teaming up in this trailer. It looks like it, but I mean that could also be. Uh... You know, they could also be editing it so they're actually fighting and it looks like they're fighting together when they're actually fighting each other. I think that sure. that's a possibility. Yeah. I'm not saying that that is. I'm just, I just think that that, that could be yeah. a possibility. I think it's definitely a possibility. Because they're making you think that they're fighting together. So maybe they're not, you know. But then mm-hmm. also you had Palpatine saying, you know, basically coming together is going to be like their downfall. Exactly. And it, so, so it seems like, so is Palpatine talking about, you know, the rebels coming together, right. rebellion coming together once again? Or just the two of or them? Or just specifically Kylo and Rey. Um, do you want to see them team up? Like, what, how are you feeling about that idea of of them working together to attack Palpatine? So if Palpatine is like truly back yeah. and he and they end up having to fight him, I think that's, that's awesome because it... Mm-hmm. At this point, that son of a bitch died already, and he's back from the dead. However, they're going to figure that yeah. whole thing out. He's a robot now. So he's going to have to be like, <laughs> to me, he's going to have to be like un- unimaginably powerful, where, where mm-hmm. one of them could not possibly take him down, where you would need two of them. Yeah. And that could be like an amazing end scene if they do it correctly. Absolutely. And especially if they add Force Ghosts to it, too. You don't like you, that? You mean like bringing Obi Wan back? Is that what I you're mean? Bring in Obi Wan, Luke Skywalker, and Anakin Skywalker as well back for a force ghost battle to oh, help yoda. them maybe yoda yeah but yoda i, I can yoda on the screen a little bit. <laughs> maybe not maybe not yoda maybe not yoda maybe only like people who should be using lightsabers would be cool oh man uh yeah i know i think a team up would be really cool i think uh this what excited me most about episode seven going into episode eight and to an extent episode eight as it built up to this before it like got rid of this plot thread is this idea of dark and light coming together in a way to build something new uh, that's what I thought was going to happen in that throne room scene with Snoke in episode eight. And then they kind of just threw it away. Um, so if they make that happen in this movie, I think I'm going to be a very, very happy person regardless of what else might happen. Uh, that said, another cool thing, uh, everyone's together in this movie. It seems like there's a lot of scenes with, uh, Ray, um, sorry, Ray Finn and Poe together, which is something I wanted since episode seven. Like I really wanted like a, a pal around, um, movie, which JJ also said what's going to happen in this movie, straight out confirmed that. So seeing it just looked really cool. Uh, what'd you think? About that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think all that's cool. I, I mean, I have nothing against the movie. Don't take me wrong. I don't have really anything negative to say about the trailer or anything. I just, I'm not getting hyped. I see so many people around me, so many people that talk shit about eight <laughs> around me. And like, you know, we're, we're on the internet, just people who talk so much shit about eight. And all of a sudden, everyone mm. soon forgets. Yeah. Everybody's all hyped. Not this guy. The JJ. I'm not getting hyped. Um, but, I, you know, I thought some of the stuff in the trailer looked cool. Um, I'm happy to see them back. The whole theme of um, uh, the, the balance and the power, like, you mm-hmm. know, being able to use, uh, you know, the force powers and, and figuring out, like, you know, the, the problem I had was, like, the dark side could yeah. also, you know, they, they, most of them started as, like, Jedi, or they learned the ways of the Jedi. Then they, they you know, dark side. the dark side. So Sith. they have, like, almost, like, two... 
different attack styles. Sith do. Why why couldn't you be good and do that also? For sure. Why can't Jedi? Right. I mean, I think that's like the idea of a gray Jedi, right? Right. Like, so yeah. it might, my, my, you know, if Kylo turns mm-hmm. to uh, the good side, then he should still be able to use all everything he learned from the dark side, which makes sense. You know, so and I, it would, and I think it sounds that would like be something cool. you would have to do to take down someone as powerful as Palpatine yeah. to to be balanced in that way to to you know overcome someone who's purely dark. Right, I and think. when they showed Ray with those red eyes, maybe she's learning like the dark side from Kylo Ren. So both of them are going to be able to use both forces that would be to wild. fight Palpatine. That maybe that's wild. something that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean that Force Vision from the last trailer. If we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, whether it's a force vision or not, sorry, dark ray from the last trailer. Like that's an interesting vision. If it is a vision, because not only does it show her clearly dark turn to the dark side, but she also has like a very specific type of lightsaber. So like for someone like a dark side vision to have that much like specificity to it, I guess that's not how you pronounce that word, but to be that specific, yes, to be that specific with like what a vision of a dark ray looks like down to like the very unique lightsaber that she would have. I don't know. Maybe maybe we do see her actually turn dark. It's probably a MacGuffin. It's probably a red herring or whatever, or, you know, uh, dark vision or something. But I don't know. That is interesting. And I would like to see them use tactics from the other side, like you're saying. That would be really cool. And on that point, like, there's that when Ray and Kylo are seemingly teaming up to attack the Darth Vader helmet. In this trailer, like there is that scene with, uh, for a split second, you see that Ray has like a dagger in her other hand, right. and people are like uh, speculating whether or not it's a Sith dagger or the dagger of Mortis, which is uh, the dagger of Mortis is from like the this uh, series of Clone Wars animated series episodes that talk about um this like special world where like the father and his son and daughter live like these almost alien forces these like uh light side force and this dark side force like are manifested as like a woman as a as a daughter and a son and the dagger mortis is used to like kill them in uh in this thing and the father of these two entities are is like a a balancing force he's almost like a gray force so and that that dagger of mortis is ultimately used to like equalize things within like that that arc or whatever so if that's being used within this movie um that gives more credence to this idea and this theme of balance and i think that would be really cool to see do you think they're gonna take like eu stuff like stuff from like the cartoons and stuff like that and put it in this, into this I don't movie know, i don't know enough about about it to say one way mm. or another I'm not, I'm not sure so they could i mean that but from your perspective I mean, it would be fan service for like the people who were hardcore into it like i would never sure. know something like that i'm not you know i watch these movies you know kind of casually i've only seen you know yeah. i've seen the old ones a lot but I, you know like all the other ones i've watched yeah, for sure. a couple of times i mean well to that point though to you being someone who doesn't like really watch this eu stuff that wouldn't you know that interests me a lot but wouldn't really like do anything for you, i would like, know have no clue that that dagger was something from the sith or yeah. even, even even be able to guess at that yeah for sure so like if they put it in this movie would that for you be annoying would you be like oh why is this i wouldn't be annoyed here? i just wouldn't care okay you know like, it wouldn't oh, do cool. anything for you no it wouldn't it wouldn't make the movie any better or worse and if anything it's the people who are really into it are going to enjoy it so i'm all for it go ahead okay yeah, I'm wondering if they would have to like explain it. At I don't all. think they would. I think no. the people who get it would get it, and, and the they would who like don't wouldn't care. Yeah, and people who don't can, if they want to look into it, they can just watch YouTube videos explaining that shit. Exactly. Yeah, I mean that's the beauty of the internet nowadays. You can find all the information you want. Uh, Speaking about losing information, yes, C3PO. Might oh have, yeah, might be getting his brain wiped again. Yes. So yeah, possibility. Very interesting. I think this makes a lot of sense. Uh, a big popular theory that I totally subscribe to is this idea that you know, three PO in the trailer is saying, you know, they ask him what he's doing. He has a bunch of wires hooked up to his brain, and he says, "I'm looking at my friends one last time," um, it, which insinuates either he's going to die or maybe his memory is getting wiped. Uh, I can see it being like a factory reset for 3PO like they're trying to take him back to um prequel times when he knew about the emperor and maybe that gives them enough information about the emperor to kind of track where he could have gone and where he's been hiding this whole time um speaking about where he's been hiding that fucking ice like glacier in yeah, space that was cool that was pretty sick yeah and then the freaking um star destroyer was all was rising out, out, of out of it like they were building this like inside of the ice somehow out in like the far reaches of space that no one is even aware of yeah, the ice would also indicate that they're further away from, you know, 
the center populated of the populated areas. Yeah, absolutely, know? absolutely. Are you excited about Palpatine being in this movie? Are they getting you there? I don't know there? how I feel about it. I mean, yeah. you know, it's... I just need to see how they're going to bring him back. Does it make sense? Like, because mm-hmm. he, he falls down and there's an explosion. How are you going to explain that away? There's so many magic force bullshit things. Leia fucking floated through space. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, sure. Oh, you know, man. like, who knows what Lord Sidious, you know, with all his training right, it, and so all his knowledge of the force. You just said Leia floated through space. Le- or Leia, yeah. Leia floated through space. Yeah. If I see some bullshit like that, that that's going to be the, you know, that's what I'm saying. They, they need mm. to do it right. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't have the answer to how, how it needs to be. I just you show me you're the storyteller. Yeah, make it good, make it make it believable. I guess within the rules of this. That said, I like he is. I think he's the most knowledgeable force user probably ever to exist. Like he he seems to have taken everything Lord Plagueis knew. You know, like right. with I mean, creating life, he created Anakin or whatever. So there's that. So like it seems like he knows everything about the force. So maybe he has, if anyone could survive a Death Star exploding, it's probably Lord Sidious. We know Palpatine's in the movie. That yeah. way we, we have a feeling that it's going to come to some sort of final battle mm-hmm. between good versus evil. Because yeah. it's Star Wars, right? Of course. What I'm excited to see is that Disney's not giving up on this, obviously. Yeah. Who's his apprentice? Who's going to take the place when he dies, if he dies? Of Sidious? Yeah. Dude, I think after this movie... Palpatine's done after this. No, they yeah, can't for bring sure. him back no, he's anymore. Done. This has got to be the final film that he is in. Well, I think this movie is the furthest the chronological timeline of Star Wars will go You think it's going backwards? Years. Like, to, like Next or prequels gonna, of prequels yeah, and stuff? It's going to be Old Republic. It's going to be fucking Revan. It's going to be a bunch of shit in the past. Like, we're not going past Episode Nine for a while. You know, but they're they're still going to need to have some sort of thing hmm. to set up when they do decide to do that. Oh yeah, I mean, there, uh, there'll need to be at least some seeds planted in that movie to set up another movie later. They don't have to get into great detail, but they do you, need to plant certain seeds. Then you do what Lucas wanted to do. Not he, this wasn't something he always wanted to do. Uh, he wanted to do like weird shit with the wills and more like microbiology shit exploring the midichlorians but i do remember like an interview at some point of him saying he would like to like move the series 100 or even a thousand years into the future i think that's what you do if you want to push the the story forward you do a big jump forward and completely change the state of the the universe or the galaxy that would work if you just leave that time empty yeah yeah but i guess this is talk to have post star wars episode nine maybe yeah but uh, I don't know. Anything you want to say? Anything else you want to say about Rise of Skywalker? Um, anything else that like uh, look, struck I, I, you? I, I hope that it's a good movie. Mm-hmm. I just I have no faith left in them. So they need to just prove something to me, dude. I have, I'm not. I don't care how good of a trailer they put out. I'll believe it when I see it. I'm back into believing in Star Wars. I like I looking at what Disney has given us. There was one abysmal movie for me. And it was especially abysmal. Episode 8 was really, really bad. It really wasn't what I wanted out of the movie. But everything else has been either good or really fucking great. I love 7. I love Solo. And I, I'm two? I'm coming around on Rogue One. 2? What? You, no, two. Disney Star Wars. I'm talking about Disney. Oh, oh Disney okay. I, I was going to say you thought yeah, two. No, 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 I was no, no, like, no. wait a second. Good. No, no, I was no. like, you're, you're Disney, good and two in the same sense. Disney era only, um, I, I think, has been great aside from like that really big flub. Okay. Okay. That. All right. And I think okay. Solo would have made money and been much more well received if it didn't come out right after the worst received Star Wars, debatably, and only having four months after that Star Wars. I can agree to that. I would say that the Disney movies have all been good with the exception of eight. They're yeah. at least good. If not great in one, yeah. one case. They're all well shot yes. for the most part. There's that too. They and got, well acted. They got actors. Yeah, they got actors. They, they got actual act. actors. All right. All right. 30 minutes in. We got we to gotta start talking about these actual movies, right? Sure. All right. Solo, Matt, was the first movie we watched. We were taking it in chronological order. Um, our general question with these movies, as always, what were your biggest highlights uh, from this movie, Matt? Um. My biggest highlights from Solo, I'll, I'll just speak about it like uh, from like a top down view mm-hmm. instead of detailing each scene or anything like that. Yeah, for sure. Solo is one of the most fun Star Wars movies, period. It is the, one of the most fun ones yeah. to watch. Hell yeah. I'm not going to say the story is the best story. I'm not going to mm-hmm. say that the characters are the best characters. None of that. Mm-hmm. But out of like, 
like pound for pound, scene for scene. There's more fun in this movie than just about any other Star Wars that I can think of. It's paced very well. It is. It's yeah. extremely well. I agree. And and the characters are, are you know, the, the actors are fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think all the way through. Yeah, everyone. I have fun with watching everybody like chew up scenes with each other. Um, I, I think Donald Glover does a great job. Tobias, uh, uh, Woody Harrelson is Tobias Beckett. I think we mentioned him earlier. Super great. Um, yeah, yeah. Amelia Clark is great in it. Um, yeah. That other chick that was from um, uh, Westworld, she was awesome in the beginning of it, who dies. Uh, Tobias is like lover. What oh, Val. Name? Val. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah for she sure. was an awesome actress. Mm, I liked her too. Um, I liked the character interactions, I think, a lot in this movie. Like every time someone talked to someone else, like it just felt like there's a lot of chemistry on screen whenever that happened. There was. The dialogue was written very well. Like yeah. al- almost to the point where you would say like they went back and like once they had their actors, they like kind of maybe worked with them to like rewrite some of these because it for came sure. very natural between... For sure. between you know, just as awkward as it was with Anakin yeah. and um, uh, Padme yeah. in, like, 2, this was, like, the complete opposite. The direct <laughs> inverse. Like, yeah, dude, speaking of, like, things that we like, Kira and Han Solo's relationship, so good. Yeah, really good. So well Very done. believable. Probably my favorite romance that I've seen in Star Wars. I might like it more than Leia and Han. Dude, it, it's really believable yeah. is the thing. Like, you can tell that they, they had, like, you know... There's so many little things... Yeah, throughout. things that they remember from their past and mm-hmm. stuff. But they have a history together. There's that scene when they're like in uh, Lando's cape room in like the Millennium Falcon, where like <laughs> they're just like looking at his capes or whatever, and they're <laughs> about it's like so they, funny. it's pretty. Yeah, he has a fucking cape room, of course, <laughs> which I love. That was great. It is great. Um, but like seeing, there's a moment where like they speak over each other, and she's like, "You go." He's like, "No, no, no, you go." Like they're they're like just like a very believable human moment right there that I really liked. Um, seeing, you know, two people who clearly liked each other, just stepping over each other and saying like, no, please, you talk. I want to hear you talk first. Right. I, I like that a lot. Um, no, there was a lot of, a lot of good little things like that in the movie. Uh, one thing I mentioned that I really like is Han Solo's like luck factor, I think was a big thing. I think that's why you picked one of those questions or one of the, made it that one of the questions. Luck. Yeah. Hope, hope or luck. Cause luck, I felt like was such a big factor in this movie, yeah. especially related. Just to like it. hope was a big factor. In Rome, yeah. That's 100%. Why I those yeah. Things. No, it was beautiful. It was well done. I was like, Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Um, but I love seeing that kind of manifest all throughout this movie. There's so many moments where Han Solo just kind of gets by just barely. through sheer luck, just barely through like sheer luck. He should have died like, like 15 times. Like, <laughs> like all throughout the movie, which is great because like Han Solo in this movie is like a younger, brasher, less skilled Han Solo, less experienced Han Solo. Because, so because of that, he does have to lean on his luck a little bit more. And because of that, it's it always feels like he, he's a little closer to death. Right. Like, I like the scene where he was with uh, Beckett and they're on the beach. And, uh, <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> when they're talking to Infant's Nest? Y- yeah, they come in and they're, they're like, yeah. oh, well, we have you surrounded right now. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Like, what you don't know is on that Millennium Falcon, there are 40 armed <laughs> guards ready to come out at a snap. And then and like, Lando, Lando takes just off. takes off. And then Han Solo just like steps back and he just, he's like, I'm sorry. Like you can see like, he's like, I'm sorry. And then to see him not know, he's not quite the perfect bullshitter yet, which is just fucking great. Yeah, but that's shit that's very believable. You yeah. know, knowing Han Solo later on, like that's shit that you're like, oh man, I could totally see that happening to him back then. I think they like that's something that I like about, a lot about this movie is they really seem to know Han Solo. Like yeah. there, there was such a good and intimate awareness of who Han Solo is and how he needed to be written. Um, that watching it, I like what's the guy's name um, who plays him, Alden uh, Aaron Reich, the guy who plays Han Solo in this movie. He just. I don't know. Like he, he, I, I was so happy f- with his performance and that was something I didn't think you could do. I didn't think you can take the most charismatic person within the star Wars mythos and recast them. Yeah. I thought he did a great job. His performance was fantastic. The only thing I would say would be better than his performance. Yeah. Um, based off of a, a, a previous character mm-hmm. is uh, young Lando. Did you like Lando more? Dude, I thought he did a great job of of he has some embodying moments. that character. Yeah. Like it, being Lando. Like, my God. He is he an excellent job. He is so that. delightful. You are correct. <laughs> like the card games, like the Sabak uh, games are so just him, like, fucking just, fun. I love when he tries to be like all suave and shit yeah. and it fucks up. Like <laughs> he just blows up in his face yeah. all the time. Yeah, it's it's very much <laughs> when, he, <laughs> when he's on that one ship and he's like recording himself. Yeah. Like <laughs> Like classically great scene, but yeah, exactly. Like, and that's something I liked uh, so much about this movie is like it had like little stuff like that, a little just funny. Like you were saying, it's a very fun movie, and it, it had is. so many just little fun parts that like we you don't get to get 
in Star Wars movies because they're always about war and these all, big oh yeah, overarching always battles. Themes, and this one is just really fun. It's just a almost crime. all the time. Even yeah, though like, there was serious stuff, you know. Exactly. And I think the the writers or directors, whoever knew that you know having Solo and, and Lando be like two two of the main mm-hmm. characters in there that we can have a lot of fun with this shit. And that's yeah. exactly what they did. Uh, meeting Chewbacca too. Like, oh yeah, I that love was, that. That was a great scene. That was really good. Him speaking like shitty Wookie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that like he spoke shitty Wookiee and because he was speaking shitty Wookiee we got like or sorry Han was speaking shitty Wookiee and because he was we would get like subtitles for him yeah but, but Chewbacca, Chewbacca still doesn't because he never does. So why would they do that? Like, it's just such an expert, like knowledge of like what is okay to do in Star Wars and what isn't. And that was really fun. Um, and then there's just the relationship is really delightful uh, throughout the movie. Like how, how, how much of a liking Chewbacca takes to Han Solo almost immediately for whatever reason, he just kind of like is smitten with him. And I thought that was really cute too. Taking a shower with him. Uh, I thought was really funny. Yeah, that was a good scene. Like, we couldn't do this one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're touchy, I think is another good line. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of great stuff. Um, what else should we mention? Do you want to talk about the uh, the crime syndicates? and? Yeah, I think the movie could have been, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you have a question written here about, you know, could this be like its own trilogy? I totally think they could have, and I don't know why they didn't. It probably had to do with them not making a lot of money. I think it, because this is the one uh, that lost money, yeah. But it, uh, you know, I, th- I think it's certainly set up, you know, I'm, I'd be totally down for more Solo because it was yeah. a fun movie. You'd have those same characters back, mm-hmm. you know. They need to do, if they're going to do this, they have to do it like now, though. These people are getting older. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the, the, to- the, the, the clock is ticking, so uh, I think if Disney is smart, Mm-hmm. Before they do another trilogy of movies, they should go back and revisit this and give it another shot. I don't think they're going to, but I think they should. I I hope they do. I mean, you have these like amazing actors who turn in such stellar performances. It would be um, just kind of a travesty to not see them used again because you 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 have such a great Han Solo. You have such a great um, Lando Calrissian at your beck and call right, exactly use them like don't let them go to waste because these are like these are awesome performers so i don't know i hope it, if it comes back in disney plus in like as a series like solo i'd be okay with that i would love to have another movie i thought like as a movie this was great i thought it got as much character development as i would want i'd be curious to see how much money they made off of like rentals and like purchases of like you know digital downloads Afterwards. and like dvds and blu-rays and yeah, stuff maybe they got their money back now and you know hopefully they got enough where they could see making another one because if they could take a break from trilogies i would love them to do that and just these yeah. one-off movies are so much better they're a lot of fun than you know most of the other stuff that we've gotten from mm-hmm. star wars they are a lot of fun uh and yeah, this is like, and it felt like such an extended universe. Like as someone who does like dabble a little, I'm not like crazy about the extended universe. I don't get too much into it. But like for, as someone who kind of does, like this is the first one that just felt like, oh, it's so removed from the main trilogy or trilogies rather, the main saga. Like it really felt like, even though it's about Han Solo, it's about Han Solo before he was involved in all this craziness. The one criticism I have about it is at the end of it, they try and tie it back into the rebellion, which really fucking irritated me. Um, Infant's nest being like, you know, part the of the progenitor, rebellion. like the, the beginning, the foundation right. by Han Solo giving her the coaxium. They that's go starting on, the rebellion. He starts the rebellion Han Solo. Like that really irritates me. Like you don't have to have every fucking star Wars bleed into the main saga like right. things can be separate there's a big galaxy don't make don't don't uh minimize your galaxy don't make it tiny don't box it in you don't have to um but yeah i don't know i, I liked i liked solo a a ton it was um it, it, as you know it's like probably one of my favorite uh star wars films period um, I thought it was a good movie. I don't, I, you know, there's people that say they talk, talk trash about Solo. I'm like, mm. did, did you see Eight and Two? Yeah, there's like this is a whole nother level above <laughs> Eight and Two. Like, I mean, even I would put it above any prequel like movie too. Uh, I would. Yeah, yeah I, I think I think I, it goes I, above that. Just too. seeing these fresh, I, mm. I think it's it's. I like some parts in, in three. I like some parts in one, two. We had garbage, a lot, but I think it's better than the prequels. We had a lot more fun, I think, watching this than any of the prequels that we went through. For yeah, definitely. Yeah, like all the way through too, which was really great. Uh, do, 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 do. I was gonna ask about the crime syndicates and Crimson Dawn and like Darth Maul. 
were you interested in seeing like more of that? This kind of goes back into like the solo stuff. But Darth Maul like, is awesome. Stuff. I'm always interested in, in Darth Maul. Uh, you were surprised to see him. Yeah, I'd forgotten that he was actually. I've only <laughs> seen the movie once before. So this is my second time seeing. Yeah, it. I for totally. Sure. Forgot you forgot he was Darth in this Maul movie. You're like, what the movie. fuck? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and you forgot he was like, or you didn't know he was even alive at this point, right? Yeah, because you had like the Clone Wars like brings him back. Eventually. Yeah, the, you told me that. I was like, I, yeah, I didn't even comprehend that. I was like, I forgot he was in here, and then like I had to ask you why the hell they brought him back. And yeah, you exactly. Explained to me that in the Clone Wars that that all that. Well, happened. yeah, it threw you off for a second. You thought like this took place before like episode one or whatever right right because it was so so weird and jarring because you know they cut him in half yeah he should have episode one <laughs> they do. where yeah. they could have saved him and used him in two more episodes yeah they blew up sidious <laughs> in a fucking death star Jesus christ <laughs> and he's alive they're just gonna re-bring back everybody nobody dude. does there's gonna be an epic battle hey. at the end of nine darth maul's gonna be there palpatine's gonna be there that's what i'm saying Luke's dude be that's there. what i'm hoping for fucking obi-wan everybody's coming in for nine that's what's gonna happen nobody's ever really gone <laughs> So, Django Fett's going to be back. <laughs> um, I'm into it. I'm ready for it. Uh, did you want to talk? Oh, well, let's see. I have like a list of characters here. Um, we kind of talked about Han Solo. We talked a bit about Kira. Uh, Dryden Voss, dude. The the main antagonist, the guy with the scars on his face. Mm-hmm. Um, loved his performance. I don't know if you have like anything you want. I think he's a great. He did a great performance, like you mm-hmm. said. His character was it was probably one of the characters that was not very fleshed out okay like for sure. angry rich dude is all i heard like the entire time <laughs> i'm like okay yeah kill the rich dude to get it yeah like why well, I, I liked his like fear of darth maul like throughout that movie he's like you know who i have to answer to and you know he'll be pissed off yeah like, yeah had, that's he had true. stuff like that and I, like him having like those uh those sabers or whatever i assume that was a cool weapon i'm assume they're like sith-esque stuff so well, maybe, they had those little things that were like lightsabers yeah exactly on them, like, so i i assume darth vader or darth maul was training him to they some were degree double-sided it's Darth Maul's MO. So there was that. And then freaking Kira, like, basically betrays Dryden Voss to get closer to Maul. Um, yeah, that was a nice little plot twist. That was super cool. Yeah, that was super cool. And I, I, I just kind of like to see, you know, the hardening of Han Solo based on, like, the people that he's he's dealing with and who he's around and stuff. And that's probably a heartbreak that, you know. And that's a heartbreak I would have for, wanted to see further investigated in future movies. Yeah, I think they could have done a lot with with, with two more movies. Did they could have done a trilogy just mm-hmm. around Solo? So that they uh, they mentioned before, and I think I mentioned it to you that like they had a Boba Fett movie in the works and an Obi One movie in the works. I would have been down for Obi One. I don't know how I feel about Boba Fett. I mean, I don't know what they could have done with him, but again, that would be up for the storyteller to to prove it to me that I would want that. So my thought with Boba Fett, what I what I had in mind was. Uh, in episode in Solo, uh, it's brought up that there's a big job on Tatooine, like something's going on in Tatooine. There's like a killer job with like a lot of money to be made, and that's where Han Solo says he's gonna he's gonna go. Um, Boba Fett's a bounty hunter. He's a guy looking for money, looking to make a living. It would have been great to have the Boba Fett movie focus on this big job, um, in on Tatooine, and Boba Fett is going to like make that happen and. Like halfway through that movie, with like the solo. Halfway through that movie, you get Han Solo there. Lando shows up, and you have them That'd like cross dope. paths. And Solo almost asks, acts like a uh, antagonist uh, within that movie. It could have been really fun. And maybe you investigate more through that. You see more Crimson Dawn. You see more Darth Maul, more Kira in the sidelines, but from a different perspective, could have been cool. And then to round out this supposed crime syndicate trilogy. The next movie is set on Tatooine as well with Obi-Wan and having it be an older Obi-Wan movie. And maybe that ends up with a... Because I think in canon, Darth Maul and Obi-Wan fight one more time when uh, Obi-Wan's a little bit older. So it could end with that. like, And, you know, Obi-Wan breaking up the crime syndicates maybe in his free time. Could have been cool. But uh, I don't know if we're going to get it. Because this movie didn't sell, so yeah, all, all Disney <laughs> had to do was not put it out four or five months. And know, I think it would have been fine. The other one. It would have been. Much I think it would have done well. Yeah. I think they were burning people out on Star Wars, and if they, they put it out in December of the next year, people mm. would have been like, "Okay, <sighs> such a bummer, such a bummer, dude." Because I would have. This was know. the only Star Wars movie since the prequels that I didn't see in the theater. It's the only and one that lost money. It wasn't that I didn't want to go. My yeah. wife didn't want to go. She was burnt. She was like she just out. watched one in December. She's like, "I'm not going to go to another mm-hmm. movie." And I was like, "All right, fine." I don't know why they had nothing in December. I don't know. I don't know All right. What do you think? Anything else you want to say about Solo? No, I think it pretty much sums up Solo. Cool. All right. Moving on to Rogue One. What were your biggest highlights from this movie, Matt? Um, 
So I think that like the the uh, movie you love this is, movie. Let's let's be clear. You love this movie. I'm a little like I think this I've is the third best bit, Star Wars movie, which is crazy. This movie to me is absolutely spectacular, man. So and you still feel that way I after still watching feel it. That way. This this, I, this rewatching it. I think Solo is a lot of fun. Yeah, but, I mean, look, Star Wars throughout the thing has a serious tone throughout the entirety of all the series. Solo is a one-off thing. I get that. Yeah. Rogue One keeps a serious tone. It, in my opinion, it makes for a better movie. Okay. It flushes out the biggest plot hole in four as to like why the fuck, like why would they, <laughs> why would they be a glaring, you know, for sure. fucking thing for the Death Star to be destroyed? For this sure. answers that question. But do you need two hours and thirteen minutes to? I'm explain glad I got that? it. To, I'm to certainly glad I got it. That there was a guy who was working on it who was disgruntled and you know built it with that defect in mind yeah i'm I glad i got it <laughs> like to me that doesn't justify listen i love i there's things i really do love about rogue one let me let me go into like what i really like i like the blurring of the lines that they show with yes, the rebellion that's that one of my favorite things i think cassian andor is one of my favorite characters because he represents that so well you're Just, speaking about how they're they're basically killing people yeah to, to benefit the rebellion yeah. there's spies saboteurs assassins all these different things within the rebellion this supposed light side of the uh, of the conflict like this is a very great exploration that the disney movies are are kind of messing with here and there every once in a while um, and hopefully this, you know, culminates in a way in, uh, in episode nine, but talking about just, just certain things, you know, like go, going into like the, the, these, uh, these gray areas within the light side is, is fascinating to me. It's something I really like. Um, so that's something I really love about Rogue One. I also think it's a fantastic war movie. Like I, I think they're, they're like the battle of Scarif is so Good. Like the last thirty minutes of that movie is so much fun. As soon as they get to to the islands, yeah. The beach, whatever, that, Scarif, that Scarif. Scarif. As soon yeah. as they get to Scarif, it's everything from that point is fantastic. It's so fucking cool. I'm having a it's great time. It's all like yeah. turned up a notch. Yeah, absolutely. And like the shots are amazing. Another thing that Rogue One has over Solo is uh, the colors are a lot more vibrant. Uh, I've heard yeah. that complaint lodged against Solo, and I never really saw it until I heard the complaint. And then rewatching it this last, I'm like, oh, it does look a little drab sometimes. Yeah, there's no real color. It's very yeah, bland. It's 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 kind of bland looking, but um, not the case in Rogue One. Rogue One's uh, much more vibrant, which I really do appreciate. Um, so there's that too. It's kind of like a prettier movie. There's uh there's better shots. I think there's that like amazing shot of that AT AT looking at uh the rocket launcher guy and they shoot the rocket and it like blows its head. Just the, the like, scenery throughout the film. Is excellent. I think it's some of the best scenery yeah. in any of the Star Wars movies. Period. The like rice paddies in the beginning of the movie, where they show a Galen Orso, or uh, Urso, like that was really cool. The um, uh, the like the mountainous uh, area where um, where they where they kill Galen. Oh, okay, uh, that yeah. whole area is fucking area. rad. It's like super mountainous, yeah. and there's storm. There's it's, the storms are nothing rolling but through. blue and dark. And yeah, stuff. that whole part is rad. Yeah, they got some cool stuff over there too. Yeah, the locations are are pretty awesome. And yeah, Scarif, man. It's something we've never seen, like this tropical world in Star Wars. Like, that was a really cool yeah, thing. It was very, you know, a stark transition from most of the other planets. We're all like desert planets or, you know, you know, Hoth was obviously like a like a frozen or an ice planet and mm -hmm. stuff. Endor was like a jungle. They never showed you like islands before, which was awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Seeing those palm trees and stuff. Yep. Uh, let's see. So I kind of want... With Rogue One, I kind of want to go through some of the characters. Okay. If you're okay with this. I sure. That's my biggest issue with this movie. Because for the things mm. I like, for seeing the conflict, for seeing... Uh, another thing I like, uh, just seeing the internal organization of the Rebellion was cool. Like, seeing how, like, certain people report to others. Uh, seeing, you know, Cassian have to take orders from this guy who's in the Rebellion. He's a good guy. He's not a bad guy. And he's saying, you have to kill Galen Orso. Like, that's your job. Like, that's what you're doing. And you can see conflict in, in Cassian. But he's like, I've been, you know, living this life for however long, and this is what I'm going to do. Since so he was six it. years old. Since he was six. Great line. One, yeah, amazing moment when he's, like, explaining, like, how long he's lived this life. Like, oh, good for you, Jin. You just figured out you're a rebel. That's awesome. I've been doing this since I was six, and it has changed me in ways that I, I just wasn't prepared for. Yep. Um, so, like, for all that you know, stuff regarding uh, the, the rebellion and stuff and like the, the overarching story, which I do like on the whole. Um, I do have issues with the characters. Not all of them. Cassian Andor, as, as you know, I think we've made pretty clear. I love him. Uh, yeah, he's the most flushed out character probably in that movie. Yeah. 
And I think by a lot. Yeah. Like by miles and miles uh, over like Churit or, you know, uh, the Imperial pilot Bodhi. Like I, I think every other characters in this movie within this movie just kind of lacks a level of character development that makes it really hard for me to give a shit about anyone but Cassian and in extension K2SO because of their relationship with each other. And for me, like that's, that's like kind of an issue. Their, their characters, uh, I don't think were fully developed because they knew that they were going to kill them all. See, they, I, they, there's not going to be any extra movies. Yeah. You know, they don't need to fully develop these characters. They can leave. I don't, I also, for, for me with storytelling, mm-hmm. I don't want every question answered. Mm-hmm. I don't need to have everybody's backstory explained to me to enjoy the movie. I'm not saying that you do, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, for, that's that's who I'm. Like, I really don't care. Like, I got, I got enough out of it from everybody. Where I'm mm-hmm. like, cool, that's what you did. You all died. Like, I'm I'm cool with all of it. I guess I would be. I I'd agree with that. If the characters, if they didn't try and make me give a shit, like when Churit dies, when fucking Churit's friend dies, and uh, Bodhi dies, when these characters die. They don't like they try and make them have an impact, and I'm like, I don't know them. I don't they think don't that mean... they did that much, though. No, freaking I, I don't really walking try to out. Make it, like... I, you know, I'm, I'm uh, forces with me, da, 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 da. and then uh, his friend, like, you know, taking that mantra and trying to like live with it too before he dies. Like, it seemed like they were trying to build up this moment for these characters that just didn't feel earned. Like, it felt like they were trying to have their cake and eat it too with the characters because you had this cool war movie. Which well, I was all let, for. Let's talk about Bodhi for a second. Okay. So they killed Bodhi, they just threw a grenade in there and he was dead and it wasn't very dramatic, right? That's true. That's okay, true. Okay, so they did take care of him the way he probably he should have taken care because he be wasn't care. really... He wasn't that big of a deal. He was just like a messenger and a pilot. Okay. That's it. Okay. Um, so his death was fine. Yeah. I understand uh, Chirrut and Bay's their relationship wasn't really explained very well. Yeah. Um, I mentioned to you, I thought those characters might have been gay, but they never really yeah, explained yeah. that. It's possible. Yeah. Um, but it they would never, be cool. you know. I would have liked to see that, though. Like, if they were, like, to see a, a more a, a more mining of that relationship, having some, like, one-on-one time with those characters instead of, like, all their discussions being, like, one-liners about each other. Right. They were they were either super close friends or they were gay. I mean, they never really explained yeah. any of that. Um, but obviously, they cared about each other deeply, so maybe that was their point that... You that's know, all that it matters. doesn't yeah, matter they care about each they, other deeply it doesn't matter deep connection for know. sure yeah that was, um, a, that was their story but the, the way they died you know i think Chirrut died fine I, I was totally fine with that Bayes went out with like you know him, him like being all upset and like you know yeah, yeah. basically killing I'm himself sacrifice essentially. myself yeah i'm just gonna shoot that didn't need to happen I'll, I'll give you that death didn't need to happen the way that it did mm. uh but Chirrut's i was totally cool with yeah yeah i guess i I don't know. I, I don't know why I have just such a, not repulsion, but just I'm like kind of diverted away from like these characters and like wanting to like them. Um, I like them because they're all willing to sacrifice themselves for a greater good. Yeah. For that, hope. Yeah. For hope. For a new hope. Right. Can we talk about fan service in this movie? Sure. And how sometimes it feels a little unnecessary. It, do- it totally does. Yeah. Like Darth Vader's castle, or that guy from Episode Four who you know with the with weird the, eye with the messed, messed up, up nose, who's you know that guy didn't need to be there. Showing you know. us three CPO or C three PO yeah, and R two for two seconds didn't need to be there. Like what is for what purpose? Yeah, they they just just dance service. Um, did you want to talk about Darth Vader? Sure. While we're on the semi negative <laughs> subject, <laughs> okay, let's, sure. let's talk and about we'll, the negative we'll and push the, back the positive. positive. Yeah, I like it. Uh, the first scene where he's with how do you say his name? Karen, uh, Carrick, Carrick, Krennic, Krennic, director Krennic. Krennic. That totally did not need to be in the movie. Mm. A thousand percent did not need to be there. Ca- uh, Castle Vader, right? It was like basically condemning him. You know, a second time. Like Tarkin already gave him a bunch of shit. You yeah. didn't need to do this again. And it really impeded the impact that it could have had showing off Vader for the first time, you know, at basically at the end of the movie, yeah. fucking up everything. Yeah, one thing we noticed, like, watching it this last time is, yeah, that scene early on where Krennic goes to talk to Vader for some reason. I don't really, I, I, I missed why he went there. Because what happened directly beforehand is Galen died. Um, he went to Tarkin. And, you know, Tarkin reprimanded him, said, I'm taking over your base or whatever. And I guess Krennic was going there to try and, like, take back his role. Uh, It could have just gone directly to him figuring out who Galen sent 
yeah his transmission to like that, that it, it, you did not need that scene at all they just wanted to have vader say be careful you don't choke on your aspirations yeah it was so a stupid. funny line it's, it was such yeah. a throwaway line like just pointless and i i, I that was probably the, the worst part of the movie i think so in my opinion that, yeah. I can, that i can recall it's like why is this even here and they also showed him out of his suit like in that tank filled with like water or whatever with yeah those that didn't yeah. need to be there either yeah i guess they just wanted to show I, yeah i don't know why make a movie about vader if All you want to make it was at the end yeah. it could have been like you know, they could have mentioned something vague that you could have you could have been like, oh, shit, are they talking about Vader? Well, that's what happened. And then have him come in and just that's be like, a, oh, shit. That's exactly what happened because Tarkin, Tar- they're like, uh, Tarkin's about to, uh, you know, deal with the battle of Scarif on the ground. And he's like, I'll deal with the, you know, Scarif. Vader will deal with the fleet. Right. That's all they had to do is just leave it there. And had you not and seen like, Vader? Oh, yeah. shit. Had you not seen Vader up until that moment? And he just mentioned Vader. You'd be like, oh, fuck, are we getting Vader in this movie? Like, what the fuck is happening? Like, right. that would have been so cool. Way more you, impactful. And then you see him on uh, the Tanta V4 fucking people off, up. Like, it would have been amazing. Right. That's that's my only, like, real problem that I have with that movie is that yeah. that would have been so much more of an impact if they just saved him for the end. For sure. Um, what else do you want to get into on uh, on this movie, Matt? The conversation that Jin had with Cassian uh, after mm-hmm. Galen dies was the probably some of the best dialogue in this movie. Yeah. Uh, where they're, they're, you know, she's, uh, Jin is telling Cassian, um, you know, that basically he's blindly following orders and that makes him no better than a stormtrooper. I, I love that line. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. You know, like he says to her, I, I, I could have pulled the trigger. I, I clearly had, oh, yeah. I clearly had the opportunity. And I, maybe, to. yeah, and, exactly. There's that too. He's like, so don't try and tell me that I'm not like, not still within control of my, uh, my morals and stuff. Yeah. That scene was rad. Um, I did like when, when Krennic, uh, you know, he's on uh, the communications tower at the end, mm-hmm. and he sees the Death Star, and they never mm-hmm. show you him die, but you know, like, he knows as soon as he sees the Death Star oh, pop up, good. that he is going to fucking die. Like, you could see it in his eyes. I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, he's just, fuck, you and know? He's like, like, oh, no, they're going to fucking <laughs> blow me up. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he's like, fuck, my own weapon. Yep, his own um, weapon. <laughs> there's, there's actually some amazing cinematography with the Death Star. Like, they have so much fun with it. Like all the different angles they have of the Death Star within this movie, um, the first time they blow up a uh, Jedha, that like Jedi temple area, um, you see as like it's about to blow up Jedha, it crosses in front of the sun of the system, and like there's just an eclipse. Yeah. So you have like this like Mayan apocalypse like <laughs> moment before it fires and just completely decimates Jedha. Uh, I thought that was super fucking awesome. Um, that was rad. So was the uh, the mm-hmm. that vehicle, the hammer, uh, the, the hammerhead, the, yeah, or whatever. Hammerhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that they, that's another yeah awesome moment in terms of like I always like to see new stuff in a Star Wars movie, like especially these Disney ones, and seeing them use that hammerhead on that like uh, fucked up Star Destroyer to like crash into the other one. Super cool. Yeah, that was gnarly and didn't break canon. You know, didn't no. break the universe in any way. Mm-mm. Like hyper speeding through a fucking uh, star destroyer <laughs> did. Oh man, you know, good old. Eight. Or not just a star destroyer, a whole fleet of star destroyers. Good old eight. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Rogue One. So I, I mean, I will say, like, I mean, we should probably go back uh, and and do both of these questions for each movie. Um, do I like Rogue One more after watching it again? Uh, I think I do personally. Um, I think like I, I, there was, there was even some like character stuff in there that like helped me, I guess, like be less upset with like how the characters were used. Like I, I said, Bodhi just felt like a useless character all throughout, but they kind of justify him here and there. Right. And they kill him in a way that's fine. And, and, you know, they, they need him to, you know, they needed him for the messenger part and then they needed him to get to the planet where, uh, Galen was. Yeah, and he just showed where I the think. base was. Yeah, the yeah, rebel yeah. base was on that planet. Yeah, exactly. He was kind of navigating them from the back Not seat rebel and base, stuff. The, uh, Imperial, Imperial base, base where Galen went and his his engineers were. Um, let's see, dude. Do you want to anything else for? Uh, all right. So I'll throw that question back to you. Uh, do you like Solo more after watching it again? I do. I like it more. Um, I I think again it was better than the prequel trilogies. Where before I think I, I think when we recorded mm-hmm. that initial thing, I thought it was better. Three was better. Yeah. It's not. Solo's better. Um, I still think I, I like Rogue One more, um, but I have no gripes with Solo. I don't, I don't know how anybody could watch Solo and say it's a bad movie. And have a bad time with that film. I, I, I don't get it. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Really weird. It's a fun movie, and it's you know it's, it's a lot less serious than the other ones, but that doesn't mean that it's bad. It's just different. And Which I like it. I like it more because it's because different. Because it's different. That's exactly. why I like Rogue One, because it's, it's not, you know... 
that 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 um the battle on Scarif. There was there was no scenes like that. Like no, that were like it was yeah. more like an up close and personal it's war. A, like yeah, it's there's really scenes cool. in Rogue One that were not like other Star Wars. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, just like you know there were scenes in uh, Solo that were not like other Star Wars. 100 percent. And that's uh that's what we need out need out of these spinoff movies and. It's a shame that it looks like we're not getting any more for a while. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I hope guess they after, go back to them at some point. Night. I mean, maybe the, whatever the next trilogy will be will just be different enough that we don't we won't need spinoff movies. I mean, if they were like, we're gonna go make Solo into a trilogy. I know it's not gonna happen. If they were like, we're gonna make Solo into a trilogy, do two more films. Dude, I'd I'm be in. so stoked. So for that. in. So in. So much more He's than if they were like, we're gonna do like, you know, ten, eleven, twelve, or if we're gonna do no, like, please stop. <laughs> negative one two three <laughs> let's take let's uh let's take a step back from uh skywalkers and lord sidious please uh all right man i mean i think that wraps it we're at like an hour here i think that kind of wraps it up uh do we have any closing thoughts before we completely close the podcast no did you get any questions uh posted to you? i got none okay no questions our community is failing us they are over us bunch of slackers <laughs> it's all right it's no biggie um well thank you guys so much for listening uh next week we'll be back with uh you know standard gaming podcast we're gonna try and change it up uh next week we haven't decided exactly what we're gonna do with the gaming podcast i have a few new things but we're gonna we're gonna discuss it we're gonna work it out maybe a little bit less gaming focus more about our own gaming experiences i'm personally excited about it um you know so keep a uh, keep your eyes peeled and ears peeled for that It'll be a little different uh matt where can we find you at from nj the number two ca so it's from nj two ca on twitter and i am at richard eiley r-i-c-h-a-r-d-i-l-i-e uh make sure to follow us at nerdthusiast uh as well on twitter um, on twitter absolutely and yeah uh give us a like give us a comment wherever you find us and we'll you know keep our eyes out for it and rate us, so much. rate us like five stars like us in the podcast yes. services of your choice yes, yes, and yes, if yes, you yes. do follow us please uh you know we'll ask you for questions before we record so if you have any questions for us, yeah absolutely all right guys thanks so much matt thank you and uh may the force be with you may the force be with you